In 1914, the restrictions imposed to British capital ships by the size of existing shipyards were overcome and thus it was possible to design larger warships for facing the upcoming war. Different combinations of armament, armor and speed were studied and, in the late 1915, the British Admiralty chose a design fitted with the same armament adopted for the battleship HMS Queen Elizabeth but built with a comparatively light armor for the purpose of reaching a speed of 33 knots. This design was called the Admiral Class and it was initially meant to comprise four ships. On the final design of 1916, the armor layout was revised and an extra weight of 5,100 tons was added. Only one ship of the Admiral Class, the HMS Hood, was completed and this happened after the end of the war, already in 1920. The illustration shows the HMS Hood as she appeared shortly after entering service. The following are some elements of interest which are depicted, six of the 12 140mm cannons, which were removed right before the beginning of World War II, the two range dials located beneath the spotting top, which were used for indicating the range of a desired target to other ships in the line of battle, so they could concentrate their fire on the same target, in similarity to clocks. Range dials used a long and a short hand to indicate the range in thousands and hundreds of yards, respectively, and the conning tower located in front of the Admiral's Bridge, which was an armored cylindrical structure topped by a rotating director fitted with a coincidence rangefinder of 9.1 meters in span. The illustration shows the HMS Hood compared with another two battlecruisers which were built just a few years before, the British SHHMS Lion and the German SMS Derflinger, which was the most modern battlecruiser design operated by the German Imperial Navy. The HMS Hood was the largest and heaviest battlecruiser ever built, surpassing in both regards the American battlecruisers of the Alaska class, completed between 1944 and 1946, and the Soviet-slash-Russian battlecruisers of the Kirov class, completed between 1980 and 1998. However, the HMS Hood was not exactly the largest warship in the world throughout her career as it has been claimed, because the American aircraft carriers of the Lexington class, in service from 1927, had slightly greater dimensions of length and beam and a much greater freeboard. Achieving the highest top speed was not only a matter of improving the machinery, but also of giving the right shape to the hull. Because of this, battlecruisers had comparatively long and narrow hulls which improved hydrodynamical performance but were disadvantageous in other regards, such as internal space and stability. The illustration shows a beam-to-length ratio comparison of the HMS Hood versus the HMS Nelson, a contemporary British battleship. The HMS Hood had four three-bladed propellers made of manganese bronze, which had 4.57 meters in diameter and weighed 20 tons each. They were respectively attached to four Brown Curtis turbines, which were rotated by the steam generated by 24 Yarrow small tube boilers, which burned fuel oil. The utilization of small tube boilers allowed to increase power on almost a 30 percent without increasing the weight of the machinery. During the trials, the mechanical power developed by this machinery reached 151,280 horsepower and this allowed to obtain a top speed of 32 knots. However, in 1941, the top speed had fallen slightly below 29 knots. The extra weight added to the final design of the Admiral class caused the problem of a wet weather deck, especially during bad weather conditions. Besides, unlike that of the largest part of contemporary capital ships, this design featured a quarterdeck, a long stern section laid one deck lower than the main weather deck and two decks lower than the elevated weather deck. The quarterdeck was another of the features that allowed to decrease the overall weight of the ship, but it was too close to the water level and thus it was easily hit by the waves, which, ironically, contributed to decrease the desired top speed.
The HMS Hood was armed with eight 381mm cannons of 42 calibers in length, distributed on four twin turrets. These capital cannons had a similar caliber than those installed in the German battleship Bismarck, but they were 10 calibers shorter, and thus they had a shorter range. The 381mm cannons were housed on armored turrets whose thickness ranged between a maximum of 38.1 cm on the front face to a minimum of 12.7 cm on the roof, with the side faces ranging between 27.9 and 30.5 cm and the rear face having 27.9 cm. A coincidence rangefinder of 9.1 meters in span was installed in the rear section of each turret to allow for autonomous targeting. The armored turrets were supported by armored barbettes whose thickness was 30.5 cm. The HMS hood had three octopal mountings of 40 mm anti-aircraft cannons installed in the elevated weather deck. These powerful weapons were intended for destroying aircraft at close to mid-ranges by means of a dense barrier of fire. The two mountings amidships were installed in 1929 and the after mounting was installed in 1938. The three hats, high angle director towers, were in charge of controlling the aim of all of the 102mm dual purpose cannons. The bearing and altitude of the target was measured by a coincidence rangefinder. These devices were stabilized for roll and fitted with steel blast covers. The six searchlights had roughly 1 meter and 10 centimeters in diameter. Due to their heavy weight, they had to be moved through hand wheels, similarly as cannon mountings were moved in manual mode. The light projectors were a match for the most powerful lighthouse projectors and their range was as long as that of capital cannons, rendering them as true light cannons. A set of smaller searchlights was installed in the Admiral's Bridge for signaling purposes. The main crane had a 18-meter long steel boom which was attached to the main tripod mast and operated by winches through steel pulleys and cables. Its most obvious purpose was to move lifeboats from the boat deck to the sea and vice versa, but it was useful for hoisting ammunition and other heavy elements as well. The two secondary cranes, located at each side of the after funnel, had their own masts and a 12-meter long wooden boom attached to them. They were useful for picking up some small boats and other elements outside the reach of the main crane. The HMS hood was fitted with two vertical funnels which served as the exhaust of 12 boilers each. The funnels had an outer casing at a distance of 15 centimeters from the funnel proper. The distance from the lower burners on the front of the boilers to the funnel top was about 30.5 meters. The spotting top and other neighboring elements were supported by a huge tripod mast. This simple design was a widespread one during the World War I and the interwar eras. The same design was adopted for the main tripod mast located after the boat deck. The Admiral's Bridge was attached to the front of the four tripod mast. Located at roughly 20 meters above the elevated weather deck, the spotting top was the highest observation point on the HMS hood and the modern equivalent of the crow's nest found on age of sail ships. It was originally topped by a rotating director fitted with a coincidence rangefinder of 4.6 meters in span and later also by the two antennas of the Type 284 gunnery radar. There was also a rotating anemometer installed in the front part of the spotting top. In the early 1941, the HMS Hood was fitted with a couple of primitive radar devices. The Type 284 gunnery radar had its two grid antennas attached to the rotating director on top of the spotting top. The Type 284 was intended for directing the fire of the 381mm cannons. Along with the Type 284, the HMS had received as well the Type 279M aerial warning radar, which was installed on the top of the main tripod mast, at roughly 30 meters above the elevated weather deck. The Type 279M was a modified version of the Type 279 on which the two antennas, 
one to transmit and one to receive, had been replaced by a single transceiving antenna. The HMS had had eight torpedo hatches opened on the sides of the hull, however, since the location of the torpedoes amidships posed a very serious risk to the ship, only four of them were made operational. It has been believed that the powerful explosive charges of the torpedoes played an important role in the catastrophic sinking of the HMS Hood after having been hit by capital projectiles from the German battleship Bismarck. The 12 140mm single cannon mountings, which had not been designed for anti-aircraft utilization, were removed between 1938 and 1940. There were 10 mountings situated beneath the elevated weather deck, closer to the waterline than the other weapons and thus more exposed to waves on rough sea. The other two mountings were situated on the elevated weather deck, next to where two unrotated projectile mountings would be later installed. A 15-meter long swinging boom was fitted at each side of the hull. The booms could be swung through string riggings to set either a perpendicular or a parallel orientation to the hull. Rope ladders hanging from the booms were used for embarking and disembarking. The main armor belt had a maximum thickness of 30.5 cm amidships, 15.2 cm on its after end and a minimum thickness of 12.7 cm on its fore end. It was made of plates inclined at 11 degrees, which could provide the same level of protection granted by the somewhat thicker vertical armor plates installed in contemporary British battleships. This was one of the features which allowed to decrease the overall weight of the HMS hood. The HMS had featured a new system of underwater protection which used tubes inside the bulges to absorb the shock inflicted by torpedoes. Five unrotated projectile mountings, protected by 1.20-meter tall plates, were installed on the HMS hood, four on the elevated weather deck and one on top of the B-381-millimeter cannon turret. These weapons were designed for protecting the ship against aerial bombings. Each mounting fired 20 explosive projectiles into the air, with a parachute attached to each of them. The idea was that the attacking aircraft would hit some of the parachute wires, causing the detonation of the projectiles. This anti-aircraft system was unsuccessful, because the parachute drop could easily blow the projectiles off their intended course. During practice fire, one of these projectiles landed on the HMS Hood's quarterdeck. As originally fitted, the HMS Hood had three bow anchors, two bower anchors weighing 9.6 tons each, situated on port and starboard side respectively, and a sheet anchor weighing 9.5 tons situated behind the starboard bower anchor. The sheet anchor was removed between 1937 and 1940 being the exact moment and reason uncertain. As originally fitted, the HMS Hood had a stern anchor weighing 3 tons, whose capstan was powered by an electric motor. This anchor was later moved to the shelter deck and eventually removed from the ship. There were additional anchors carried amidships at various times during her service time. There were eight hose reels located in the vicinity of the four 381mm cannon turrets, four on the quarterdeck and four on the bow. They were useful for washing the decks or for fighting fires. The seven 102mm twin cannon mountings were installed between 1939 and 1940. They were dual-purpose weapons useful for destroying both aircraft and lightly armored ships. Despite their smaller caliber, they were meant to take the role of the 12 140mm single cannon mountings originally installed on the HMS Hood, a fact reflecting that the importance of secondary anti-ship armament was diminishing in that time. Ready-to-use ammunition lockers were situated in the vicinity of these weapons to keep them firing as steadily as possible during a fight.
When the HMS Hood was completed in 1920, her only anti-aircraft armament were four 102mm cannons. She lacked any quick-firing anti-aircraft weapon and in the subsequent years, as the earliest aircraft carriers became operational, it was understood the necessity of such armament. Therefore, besides the 40mm anti-aircraft cannons, 12.7mm anti-aircraft machine guns were installed on four quadruple mountings. These weapons built by Vickers were useful for destroying aircraft at close ranges only. The HMS Hood had a large and diverse collection of lifeboats and rafts on board, which changed from time to time. In this illustration, they are depicted two wooden canoes served by davits, eight boats of diverse type, including two motorboats, served by the main crane, for small boats, including two motorboats, served by the two secondary cranes and a good number of pneumatic rafts. Parabanes were stored in two small structures immediately abaft the forward breakwater. They were also known to be mounted to the forward superstructure. These torpedo-shaped water kites were towed from lines on the bow to detect mines or obstacles before they could damage the ship. The bow anchor chains were made up of links which had 50.8 cm in length and 8.57 cm in diameter. The combined chains consisted of 41 shackles, 35 full shackles and 12 half shackles, for an overall length of 937 meters when three bow anchors were carried. The bower chains had 15 shackles and 343 meters in length each and the sheet chain had 11 shackles and 251 meters in length. Two chain holders and a middle line capstan were provided, all connected to the capstan engine. A third holder was provided for the sheet chain for letting go only.